Hey guys, what's up? This is Cody Miller, and this is my Western Digital NAS. Now, I've had this thing for a couple of months, and it's been serving me pretty well. But today, I was mucking around in the settings a little bit, and I discovered that it has SSH capability. So, I enabled it, and decided to do a little bit of mucking around in it. Now, I'll warn you that this video isn't exactly for... Uh, the non-nerdy kind. So, if you're not one of those people, this, I, I recommend you just leave because, I mean, this is just basically me digging into a command line for, like, two years. If that is your sort of thing, well then, I hope I don't disappoint you with too much newbery. Yes, so we do support SSH. Um, now, it does prompt you whenever you enable it that making any modifications to the software or the firmware um, will result in voiding your warranty. So, you know, use at your own risk. But um, yeah, so we're just gonna go ahead and use uh, Bitvice here to log on. And yes, should do it. Okay, so you see we are now logged in. Um, so the first thing that I want to do is I want to uh, figure out what Linux version this is because this is, I assume, Linux as most of these things are. So we're just going to go uname r. So Linux version 3.2.26. Now I believe this is a super old version of Linux. I think we're at version four now. Linux 3.2.26. So this was released in 2012. So yeah, this is pretty old. Um, yeah, no longer active. No more driver support or anything for this kernel. I think we're actually at Linux four now. So that would be Linux, let's see, Linux. Uh, Linux kernel archive, so yep, latest stable release 4.9.7. Um, and that was as of the 1st of February, so just a couple of days ago. My last login was in May, apparently, in 2014, so I'm guessing that is whenever the software was originally configured on this system. So this thing has been sitting on the shelf since 2014. That's, that's a long time. I think it's 2017 now. I guess that would explain why. Or, well, no, because it's a pretty nice size hard drive. Um, so I guess the next thing we're going to do is we're going to do, um, let's see what CPU we have here. So we're going to ls CPU. Um, okay. So as I expected, we have an ARM version 7. So this is going to be 32-bit, uh, running little Indian. Uh, two CPUs, so threads per core, no hyper-threading. Uh, cores per socket, two. So, yep, just a dual core. And it's not showing me my frequency. Let's see if we can... use megahertz yeah there is nothing there so I guess it doesn't have a frequency registration um, let's go ahead let's have uh, free memory let's see how much memory we have and we have we have 255 Sorry, 225 megabytes. So I'm guessing. Yeah, that's actually not a whole lot of memory. I was hoping that it would have closer to about 512 megabytes, but you know, we don't. Uh, we do have almost 500 megabytes of swap, but that doesn't really mean anything these days. 
It's actually not a lot for swap anyway. But I mean, this appears just to be a very uh, stripped down version of Linux. So it doesn't really, yeah, we're using 173 megs. We have 54 megabytes, sorry, 51 megabytes free. And we're only using 19 megabytes of our swap. So this has actually been on for a couple weeks. Um, so that's actually not been, that's not bad, seeing as it's been on that long. Um, obviously, this does work out well for it. Just, you know, if you decided to install a custom kernel installation, you're going to have to keep these things in mind. Especially if you wanted to, like, say, try to use this as a web server, you're obviously not going to be doing too much heavy script usage with very many users. So, not really too great there, but, you know, this is just a NAS. It's just a user and a NAS, so it doesn't really need that much capability. Um, you know what, let's try to cat, what is it? It's in proc, right? Proc. Uh, CPU info. So we got ARM7. Yep, yep. Uh, our BOGO MIPS is at 1,292. So I'm going to guess. I don't remember what BOGO MIPS exactly is, but I think that's our CPU frequency. One so that's about that's about 1.2 1.3 gigahertz rounded up down whatever uh, of course we have like swp half thumb uh, standard um, arm extensions cpu implementer cpu architecture of course 7 32 bit um, oh this is interesting hardware is actually not made by western digital Let's go ahead and Google this and see if we can... Actually, that's really interesting. Serial number is nothing but zeros. I don't think that's a valid serial number, Western Digital. <laughs> um, let's go ahead. We'll Google that. Someone has already been digging through this. So we have... It's a mind speed... What? This, this article was released in 2012. Uh, so this would have, would be in line. This is probably when operation started for the development of this. Control tasks alongside blah, 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 blah. Goal by adding blah, 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 blah. So the C2000 Yeah, so I'm guessing that this is, in fact, yep, a 1.2 gigahertz chip from MindSpeed. Um, so they're the manufacturers of this particular ARM unit. Um, of course, serial number. Mm, nothing. What we have is 32 bits ARM CPU with 250. 56 megabytes of system memory the Linux kernel version uh, 3.2.26 I'm just going to put 2012 um, I'll go ahead and put at 1.2 gigahertz dual core so that's actually not bad that is actually capable of doing some things uh, one thing I'm interested in though is do we have Python actually do we even have V oh my god we have V okay um,
quit V. All right. So um, we got a fuck. <laughs> I always forget how to use V whenever I need to use V. It's colon, and then uh, there we go. Okay. Oh, I made it out of V. Okay. So obviously V was pretty much going to be a given. Um, what is that other one? Nano? Oops. Fuck. Oh, okay. So we have Nano. All right. That's perfect. So we actually have a very, uh, we have a useful editor here. So, um, yeah, we can write out. Um, file names for right. Uh, okay, I don't want to do this at the moment. So I'm just going to cancel and uh, exit. So we have that. Save modified buffer. No, okay. Let's see if we have, uh, do we have, let's see if we have Python. Okay, we have Python. That is. Absolutely perfect. Oh, goddamn. We exit. Wow. It's been too long since I. Okay. Perfect. Um, I assume we probably also have Perl. Maybe. Not. I guess we have Perl. Um, do we have Java? Nope, no Java. Uh, do we have Open JDK? Nope, so we don't have Java support. Um, but we do have some scripting, so we can get some stuff done. Ooh, here's a good one. Do we have GCC? Nope. Probably not a G++ either. Um... Yeah, so we do have some capabilities to um, run custom scripts on this. Just not a whole lot. Um, I wonder if, uh, I believe that's right, HTTP, let me Google that. So we don't have HTTPD installed. So that means we don't have any Apache. So out of the box, we can't run an HTTP server, but um, I don't see any reason why we couldn't install one. Um, we would just need to compile it for ARM. I've never compiled something like that for ARM. But I don't, I would imagine if people are running it on Raspberry Pis, there's probably already a pre-compiled ARM do so. I don't think. Like, I'm pretty sure the Raspberry Pi has uh, ARM version 7 as well. So there's that. It's not really something I want to really experiment with at this time, but I mean, it is something that will be interesting. Maybe in the future I might decide to do something else with this drive. I don't know. Um, kind of already wanting to get a different one so I'd like to have one that has RAID 1 support for more redundancy this is just a single 4 terabyte drive um, so you know we don't really we don't have that as an option but I would like to one I do wonder it has to have HTTPD has to have at least some kind of web server now that I think about it because we have it right here we're accessing this so we have something I don't know what 
Um, what, what others are there? Okay, so after some Googling, I think this is actually probably running on uh, Lite HTTPD, which is just a stripped down version of uh, Apache. So let's see, is that Lite HTTPD version? Hmm. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, okay, so we're running something. I don't, I don't know what. Why could it be running? Actually, I don't know why I didn't think about this earlier. I can probably do, um, was it dev bin? What? Where are we now? Nothing. Oh, wait. Hold on. Let's, uh, oh, so we just have, let's just go in the bin here. Okay. Um, dun, 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 dun. um. Oh, what's this? Unlock manager server. Let's set this. Log manager for server fuse file systems, file system user space, blah, 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 blah. Has no options. Um, let's, uh, let's ls dev real quick. Oh, what am I thinking? That's not what I'm looking for. It's not going to have anything to do with what I'm looking for. Um, Data volume, boot, etc. Lib, media. Let's ls proc. I think that's what I was trying to think of. This will show us. Tells me nothing. Lawnmower. Every time I look into like Linux systems, it's like looking into health. Watching the WAN show here. And, uh, so apparently Linus, is, he's getting himself one petabyte uh, with, uh, I think he said he was only using CentOS. And um, yeah, so a petabyte, a petabyte. God, I, I wish I could afford a petabyte. I can barely afford it. Four terabyte NAS running a like five year old version of Linux. You know what I just thought of was I could see if I can check the startup scripts and see um, what exactly launches whenever this thing turns on. Um, I think we can just do uh, it's RC uh, maybe what Hold on. We have do we have uh, etc what etc we don't, we don't have an etc. No, we have an etc. What? Oh. Uh, okay. Okay. <laughs> LS ETC, not ECT. Uh, RC asterisk dot D. Uh, oh my god. Okay. Let's see here. Mm, uh, I remember why I don't like these things. Uh, it's like interrupts stuff. I don't really care. 
care about. Uh, hey, what's this? This looks promising. Let's just, uh, let's Google that. Some Russian. This looks dumb. This looks like the actual software. So we might not have an actual uh, HTTP. Program, but we might have particularly is this Japanese Chinese I don't I don't know it's like it could be Chinese um, dun, 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 dun. so this could be um let's let's go ahead and download this and see what exactly is inside of it we might actually this might actually be demand based what is this? Apache. Apache 2. Uh, what is this? Okay, hold on. Oh, okay. So we have Apache. D band. Oh, okay. Perfect. See, I don't know why I didn't just do this before. I was using, we do have to, Apache though, um, server was built in 2013, okay, so basically, yeah, I'm going to say development of this definitely started in 2012, and it probably hit the shelves in 2014, which is why we see the last login from 2014, uh, huh, Pretty cool, I guess. So we do have Apache. Uh, and I was trying to use HTTPD, not Apache 2. I didn't think to try Apache 2. But we do have Apache. So we do have HTTP services, which means somewhere we have... Uh, should have an HTML file or a PHP file to represent but um let's start with a fresh start of LS um let's LS home nothing at home um you know what what is inside of S bin IP tables. Uh huh. Interesting. What's inside of shit? It's inside of SRV. So we have FTP, so that's LS. Ah, LS, SRV, FTP. It's nothing. Okay. Um, side of media. Nothing. Let's just do another LS so we can don't have to scroll up. Since I have data volume.
What am I doing? Get your act together. What? Oh, I typed share, not shares. Okay. Unfortunately, I'm using a poker three, so I can't use an up arrow. Okay, so this here is actually the hard drive's share space. So here's where my music is, where my pictures are, my shared videos. And that's the band file that I just renamed a .zip. As you can see here. So that's what this is. So now we know where that is. Okay. Um, I still have no idea where the home pages are for the uh, GUI interface, which for whatever reason I've now become obsessed with finding as of the last 20 minutes. Um, Yeah, there is a bar. Bar's right there. Okay. So, ls var www. Okay. See, now we're getting somewhere. Um, what is the copy command? Is it cp? Okay. So, we're going to copy. Um, I think we can just do var www. And we should be able to just um, uh, that would be shares public. Okay. Okay. Ah, uh, hold on. Let me let me go back. What? Okay, so now. Okay, so this is probably seeing as this is the default index page. So Apache is actually set up. Let's um. Huh. Well, at least it's installed. I don't know if it's set up yet. Um. I think it was K. Yeah. No. S. Sixty-one. Unit NAS which was the file that I googled and downloaded and tried to rename this right here this demand file let's actually rename this ah why is it hiding okay so crap I'm gonna rename this a demand file yes so this deban file, because this is apparently running deban. Um, this is probably what this interface is running on. It's probably generating this. Uh, crap. Which is completely possible. You can do that. You can make your own kind of. A web server software which actually kind of makes sense seeing as it's 
seeing as what it's doing. Scan stuff and all that nonsense. So I'm gonna say that this is custom interface, probably. Judging by um, this Chinese guy, wherever he was. But we are running uh, Apache, Apache 2. Apache 2.4.4 Deban. So we are running Deban. Okay, so actually, what version of Deban was built on version okay Deban Linux version uh, where'd it go here we go 2.2.26 so this was built on Wheezy Deban Wheezy Yes. Oh wow, it's actually still supported LTS. Okay. No. Oh, initially released 2013. Okay, so see, there we go. Yeah, so this is probably demand wheezy. That falls into our timeline between 2012 and 2014 for its development. And yeah, so this would have been, so this is Debian Wheezy. Pretty interesting. Huh. Is there actually a command to verify that though? Linux version to blah, 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 GCC. Ver DGCC is on here. This is Ubuntu. Build me is stir at Ubuntu, so it is demand based, but it's Ubuntu. <coughs> I could have sworn I typed GCC and it didn't do anything. But we do have GCC, so that's cool. Cross tool, blah 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 blah. Oh, maybe this was it was compiled with that version of GCC. What is this? I can't ever say that I've, I've ever said <coughs> <coughs> And we have Apache 2 uh, version we'll just, we'll just use this so this is probably just pretty much a bone stock version of um, of Ubuntu with their special software on it and a couple configurations to uh, set up network sharing and whatnot. So that's pretty cool. Um, don't really know what to do from here. Yeah, I just I just wanted to know. What kind of, you know, CPU and memory we were dealing with here, but somehow I got into trying to figure out um, a whole lot more than that. So we, we're running Ubuntu. And what version of Ubuntu exactly are we running? Uh, let's see, which, which one was based off of Wheezy? Spicy font, I actually think, no, edgy, edgy eft. This was the first Ubuntu version I used. No, 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 no. It was definitely Feisty font. Yeah, Feisty font was the first version of Linux that I actually used. That was back in 2007, I guess. And this, I think, I was really excited for. Hardy Heron, Jaunty Jackalope, 
I used Jaunty Jackalope for a long time. Karmic Koala. This... I think I had... I think I have this on a DVD installation. Actually, I think I also have Jaunty Jackalope on a DVD installation. Uh, this right here, Nag Nag Natty Narwhal. This is when I started moving away from Linux. What, what was I looking for? 2011, 2011, 2012, 2013, so this would have been Saucy Salamander. So this is running Saucy Salamander. Most likely. Um. <laughs> okay, so now there's only one question. Well, I guess two questions left. Um, whether or not we have uh, PHP and MySQL. Let's just go ahead. Let's do uh, my SQL uh, version. Okay, so my SQL installed. Let's try. Um, I don't know why I didn't think to use the find command before. That would have really helped, actually. <laughs> Let's check the var. Just to see if it's even on here. So we'll do um, let's do ls do var lib my sql. Wait, let's just do ls var lib. Okay, so we do have, oh, there's PHP 5. Uh, so we do have PHP. Uh, that, did, that did not work the way that I intended it to. Um, okay, so we do have PHP installed. PHP 5.4.11, tag 1, it is installed. Uh, 2013, again, this falls into our development time frame. Uh, send engine, okay. Uh, do we have, uh, let's, maybe we're using a different version of uh, SQL. Um, can we just do SQL? Let me Google something. Shit. <laughs> this should work. QLD. Help. Verbose. Okay, so it's not it's not in there. Or better, let's check. User S bin. We should see. See, there's Apache two. Man, I should have looked in here to begin with too. Um, Apache two CTL ARP. But that doesn't mean that we can't install it, since this is Ubuntu. We can easily install this. Um, if it was connected to, oh, actually, do we have apt-get? Oh, ho, ho, ho. Yes. So we do have apt and apt-get. This is perfect. So we can easily install MySQL. 
that should that's just a dead giveaway so yeah some qualified in 2012 again following in between the 2012 to 2014 development cycle so there's a lot of stuff pointing to that this is really interesting because I was just thinking about this a minute ago um, during 2012 and 2013 the only operating system I was actually using was Linux and I, was, I think I was using primarily Linux Mint at the time but I think 2014 was when I stopped using Linux I haven't really used it since so it's interesting that this device falls within my peak of Linux usage when this was last built so it's kind of like <laughs> I forgot about this stuff super cow powers <laughs> <laughs> oh my god okay so it doesn't look like we have mysql we do have php installed we do have apache installed we do have apt-get so we can easily get whatever resources we need um it looks like the web interface is using um uh, a custom package from western digital which apparently can just be downloaded from their website so you can essentially install their software on any Linux computer and have your own NAS um, that was compatible with the Western Digital MyCloud software which is super interesting so that means I could essentially just build my own NAS uh, using the software that I found that that one guy had posted but um yeah so this is this is quite interesting we do have uh, PHP 4 Five, uh, which version? Here we go. PHP. So, this is really, this is really cool because you could actually. Let's see. Uh, how much is a one terabyte version? Of this? Two terabytes, one hundred thirty-five dollars. So. $131 so in reality um, for $131 you know you could get basically this device running this version of Linux and this is actually this is a pretty powerful installation of Linux and you know sure you have to SSH into it but the software is free and I mean really for that price a two terabyte server you know you could run your own website your own blog off of it so long as you were willing to do a little bit of configuration in here that would be pretty interesting now granted this isn't very powerful hardware wise by today's standards but you know so long as you wasn't doing something like running a high activity blog um, based off of WordPress or you know um, a heavy forum software like PHP VB5 that was getting heavy traffic um, this would be pretty decent for a basic web server and I mean I think this has WD greens in it I don't know I know that um, I mean here you can get a raid um, my cloud mirror uh, let's see, a four terabyte mirror. See, look, that is—is is that two two terabytes? I wonder. Well, that one has two USBs. So I mean, like, you could run this in RAID one, and yeah, yeah. So this is two four terabyte. Um, RAID 1's, yeah, files are automatically saved twice with RAID 1, so you have a 4 terabyte RAID 1 server, so you're not going to lose it. I'm going to guess that this probably has more RAM, um, and probably a little bit more processing power, just because of its RAID configuration. Um, obviously, you can see the condition of both disk statuses. So you could really build a pretty decent server out of this um, 
for not a whole lot of money. I mean, at this point in time, this isn't really... It just seems a little expensive. Yeah, because, like, look, how many terabytes running from 355? So, obviously, these ones are discontinued now. And this is the only thing that would that really kills me right here. Um, this is just this just isn't a lot of memory these days. Okay, so I just went ahead and threw together a quick uh, bash file. This just has a little infinite for loop, clear command, and the free memory command. So that way we can um, go ahead and see how much memory operation. Uh, the system is using in an infinite loop. Um, and I'm going to run this while um, crap. I'm going to run this while I copy over a file. So we can see what the file operations look like uh, memory usage wise. Just to see how it's handling its low memory. So um, it flashes kind of fast, but you can still kind of see. We can have our free memory here as well. Here's a two gigabyte time lapse that I have. Um, it's a 4K time lapse. I'm just going to go ahead and copy this to um, the cloud drive. Put this in shared videos. And watch as it copies over as you can see it's going to take it a minute you can see what it's doing um, we're already dropping down to 44 megabytes see the swap is taking a little bit of a hit but not too much it's actually doing really well Okay, so it didn't seem like during that entire copy operation our memory really um, our memory really gave us much issue. Alright guys, so that's going to be it for this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, good for you. Have fun.